BMW's second generation 4 Series convertible switches to a fabric folding roof and so can now offer a more credible alternative option to executive segment mid-sized Cabriolet buyers not already swayed by the competing charms of rival open top versions of the Audi A5 and Mercedes C-Class. You won't get the large boot and cutting edge driving dynamics of the 4 Series Coupe, but compensations come in the form of refinement, security and drop top desirability. You'd like one. Being able to switch to a fabric folding roof has enabled this BMW to revert back towards the brand's classic 50-50 weight distribution setup, a formula that ought to set its handling apart from its rivals. So we approach the drive in this car with rather high hopes. This G23 era design also benefits from a package of dynamic changes installed into the coupe and grand coupe versions of this second generation 4 series. And those are aimed at making cars from this model line drive more distinctively than their commoner 3 series counterparts. To that end, the chassis has been extensively tweaked and there's a wider rear track that gives this Mark II design a lower centre of gravity. Plus, the body and suspension mountings are stiffer, the ride height's lower, there are firmer springs and anti-roll bars, and this convertible gets a freshly developed double-jointed spring strut front suspension and a five-link rear axle. What is, of course, directly shared with the 3 Series and with pretty much every other mid to large size BMW is what lies beneath the bonnet, the six-cylinder petrol M440i model that we're trying here, which emits a particularly purposeful burble from its twin tailpipes. It's the kind of thing that in this convertible model you can hear, of course, much more clearly when the roof is down. Now, the switch uh, from metal panels to fabric top hasn't made the uh, retraction operation very much quicker. It now takes 18 seconds rather than 20 seconds, but the key improvement lies with the fact that when you want to erect or retract the roof on the move, uh, you can now do it at speeds of up to 31 miles an hour rather than having to slow all the way down to below eight miles an hour, and that was the case before. The key question here, though, is whether the change in design format for the roof has uh, fundamentally changed the way in which this car drives. Well, there isn't quite the same feeling of agility that you get in an equivalent 4 Series Coupe. Uh, this convertible version does, after all, have to cart around uh, 150 kilos of extra weight. Plus, the slight loss of rigidity in the open top body structure is occasionally betrayed by the odd shimmy over undulating surfaces and by a few more reverberations through the body shell uh, when you encounter potholes and poorer tarmac tears. Uh, you would get the same though from obvious rivals and ride quality, although again, predictably not quite as good as it is in the fixed top model, is slightly better than it is with the competitor cabriolets we mentioned. For reasons that BMW hasn't troubled us with, uh, the company's X-Drive four-wheel drive system isn't available further down the range in the way that it is with the equivalent 4 Series Coupe, so it's highly likely that you'll find yourself driving a rear-driven S-Drive version of this convertible, which should feel more involving than any other mid-sized executive open-top model that you'll have driven, if that's uh, the kind of thing that you're looking for. Upgraded four-cylinder, two-liter engines from BMW's Efficient Dynamics family are used across the power plant range, which kicks off for petrol people with the 184 horsepower 420i variant. Same units also used in uprated 258 HP guys in the Braunier 430i. If you want six cylinders, you'll need the 374 horsepower engine of the rare and now mild hybrid embellished M440i X-Drive variant that we're trying here. Plus, there's the full-fat M4 competition road burner, which for this generation of models gets X-Drive and it can now put out as much as 510 horsepower. The diesel lineup kicks off with the 190 horsepower 420D, which also gets the 48 volt mild hybrid tech and is available only in rear driven form, as is the case with the straight six cylinder uh, diesel 430D variant, which offers 286 horsepower. For an all wheel driven diesel 4 series convertible, you'll have to choose the pricier M440D X Drive derivative that's using the same 3 litre engine in a 340 horsepower state of tune. An 8-speed ZF Auto gearbox is now mandatory with all engines. 
and WLTP rated efficiency is extremely class competitive. Even this potent M440i X drive is capable of up to 40.9 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 159 grams per kilometer of CO2. BMW design chief Domagoj Dukec must have heaved a sigh of relief when the company finally abandoned a metal folding roof system for this car. It's obviously much easier to produce eye-catching pavement presence when you don't have to stack a pallet full of metal panels behind the rear seat. And so it proves here the move to a fabric top for this second generation 4 Series design allows for a more distinctive interpretation of the low slung silhouette that's been long established as a signature feature of mid-sized BMW convertibles. We've now got a slightly larger piece of Bavarian real estate than was presented before. This Mark II G23 series design being 128 millimeters longer than its predecessor, a 10 millimeter lower roof height, and these three-dimensionally sculpted surfaces over the rear wheel arches, which usually house uh, 18 or 19 inch rims, give a more striking look. But the real story here is the retracting top which operates within 18 seconds at the press of a button, including on the move at speeds of up to 31 miles an hour. It's quite a piece of theatre and it also works via the key fob. So if you're sipping a cappuccino in a coffee shop over the road from your car when the heavens open, you won't have to stir yourself if you've left it open to the elements. In an attempt to retain some of the strength of the previous hardtop, this roof incorporates large panel bow elements, a flush fitting glass rear window, several layers of insulation and a fabric cover available either in black or anthracite colours. Up front, there's no doubt about the main talking point, the more vertical upright kidney grille. It's intended to reference classic BMWs like the pre-war 328 sports car. At the rear, the slim, darkened, full LED tail lamps aim to emphasize this G23 series design's 27 millimeter increase in width and lower center of gravity. Time to take a look inside with cabin access possible via your smartphone if you've specified the digital key option and you have the right kind of handset. Uh, the doors, as it turns out, are absolutely huge. These four series models feature the longest ones fitted to any BMW in current production. Once you take a seat up front, you'll find the cabin of this G23 generation convertible is a good deal more sophisticated than that of the previous generation model. Uh, some things are familiar though. Uh, this motorized belt buckler that hands you your belt buckle as you get in, uh, and also the slightly lower driving stance, which aims to differentiate this interior from that of the current BMW 3 Series. It positions you uh, via unique and completely re-sculpted leather stitched sports seats with contoured side bolsters. Uh, these are heated and powered as standard and as an option they can also feature so-called warm air collars which can lightly massage your neck with warm air when you're driving roof down on chilly days. Uh, everything is now a little more canted towards the driver. Uh, the start button that's been repositioned down here next to the restyled auto gear stick. And the steering wheel now befits the ambiance of the slightly larger, slightly more luxurious sports coupe this car has become. It's the screens of the standard uh, live cockpit professional package uh, that you'll probably notice first though. A 12.3 inch monitor replaces the previous model's analog dials in the instrument cluster here and a bigger center dash iDrive infotainment display uh, which is now much better integrated into the center of the fascia and 10.25 inches in size. There's some clever stuff incorporated into this setup uh, including the brand's connected package professional media package and what BMW calls an intelligent personal assistant which uh, works a bit like the Siri or Google Assistant systems that you might use on your phone uh, and is there to answer questions that you can voice to the car as you drive it. Okay, let's take a look in the back. Now it's obviously going to be slightly more awkward to reach the rear fuse if the roof's up. 
Uh, BMW markets this as a four-seat convertible, but the previous generation version of this model only just about qualified on that score, uh, hence perhaps the need for this replacement model's slight increase in length. Uh, now, you're not going to be able to use these back seats at all if you fitted the optional wind deflector. Uh, that usefully reduces roof down turbulence on the move when there's only two of you up front. But let's assume that you haven't got that in place. Uh, reaching these back seats, it's aided by these electrically operable front chairs. Now, they thoughtfully return to their original position once they've been used uh, so the driver doesn't have to reset them uh, every time someone climbs into the rear. Even so, it is still a bit of a squeeze through a relatively narrow gap to get into the back. Mind you, that is true of all cars in this segment and once you're in, there's a useful increase in legroom over what was provided before thanks to this G23 series design's 41mm increase in wheelbase length. That means there's actually now just about enough legroom for an adult to sit here without feeling really cramped. Uh, when the top's raised, there's actually a fraction more headspace too. That's despite this Mark II model's lower roof height, although taller folk will still need to lean forward slightly or sit with their heads brushing the ceiling. Finally, let's take a look in the boot. Once open, it reveals a large but shallow space that's now increased to 300 litres. If you need more room, the backrest doesn't split, but a ski hatch is provided as standard. Uh, this rather hidden catch in the corner of the boot drops the backrest. Uh, the hatch allows longer items like skis to be slid forward into the cabin without disturbing two rear seated folk. In summary, here BMW has built a benchmark contender in this class, offering a sheer depth of engineering that in day-to-day -day driving will rarely fail to impress. And thanks to the change to the soft top format, it's now able to look as striking and expensive as a convertible of this kind should when the sun's out and all's right with the world. True, there are probably all kinds of ways of more sensibly spending the budget that's required for one of these. But you know what? Right here, right now, we can't really think of any. <laughs>